What's up, YouTube? So today I want to discuss the style of Merkaba. So I'm probably going to split this up into various episodes. Today I'm hopefully going to achieve looking at the kick and bass and a couple of kind of rhythmic and sound effects elements. And then in future episodes, I'm going to go into a couple of different synths and that kind of thing. So straight off the bat, this is not an exact replica of the Merkaba track. I kind of just tried to create a kind of stylistic look at a lot of the things that I think make his style interesting. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff to unpack here. So let's dive in and have a look. Okay, you guys get the picture. So first up, I wanna look at the kick drum. So if you haven't seen my episode on, you know, what I think makes, uh, what makes or breaks Cytron's kick drums, you should definitely check it out because I used the kind of kick drum that I created for that Xenon example as a kind of basis for this kick. However, um, there was a couple of interesting things that I added. So I noticed that uh, Makaba's kick had a lot more of a different kind of transient to your usual kind of uh, Cytron's kicks. It almost sounded like a acoustic kick transient. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna uh, mute these two layers which I've added on top and we're just gonna look at the kick two layer. So this would be what I created in the kicks video. So you should definitely go check that out. And we're gonna take it a little bit further with a couple of layers. So there we've got a kind of bare bones, you know, Xenon Cytrons kick drum. But like I said, you know, what made this one particularly special is I found that there was kind of like more of an acoustic texture in the transient of the sound. So I added these two uh, sort of, I think they're acoustic samples um, of kicks that I had um, from the Thomas Penton kick pack as well. Uh, each one was EQ'd individually. And then I fed all three of those channels through to a group channel, which I then processed um, as if it was kind of one kick, if that makes sense. And I also did a little bit of like envelope adjustments here on the actual sampler tracks, as you can see, you know, the one kind of accentuating the transient and the one accentuating the kind of like body of the sound. So these are the two layers. And then when we add that to the kind of like Cytron's kick layer, it creates this kind of like more full bodied sound. So in terms of the processing here, I just created a little bit of uh, transient shaping using the kilohertz transient shaper, pumped the attack and pump up a little bit and then turned the speed down quite drastically just to kind of like accentuate more of that kind of transient effect. And then it was some pretty drastic EQ over here. The reason I used Curve EQ was kind of, um, I was trying to match the sample or the reference and it was just a little bit easier here, but you can use pretty much any EQ. Uh, this is the kind of shape that you'd be looking for. Um, you can pause the screen to look at the exact kind of Hertz readout at these points if you need. Um, and then, you know, just some further EQing there for coloration purposes, as well as um, I used Elephant less as a kind of mastering limiter and more to just kind of like squash and compress the overall signal. But it's just so easy to use. I just slap it on there, turn up the gain, reduce the ceiling until I've kind of got the desired effect. So here, what I want to do is I actually want to show you um, the difference with and without these uh, these different plugins as we audition the example. Uh, for those who are wondering, the MV meter here is basically to reduce the amount of gain that was increased by the transient. So I'm actually going to monitor with both of those. So as you can see, the transient shaper kind of cleaned up a little bit of that fuzziness in the tail, which is pretty interesting. Um, and it made it a lot more punchy as well, which is really, really good. Um, that's kind of exactly what we wanted. 
but then I use the uh, elephant to kind of like smooth out the overall dynamics of the sound, you know, so that there's not too much transient, not too much body. It's kind of like even between those two. Check this out. And that's it from in terms of like the kicks sound design and mixing and that kind of thing. Let's have a look at the bass. The bass is made up of two layers here, but just for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to mute this one and we're going to have a look at the one because essentially what I did was I copied it and um, I duplicated it and changed the envelopes a little bit. So I'm just going to do that again here. I mean, it might result in a slightly different sound, but just for the purpose of this tutorial um, to show you guys like how I achieved it, I'm going to kind of recreate it from scratch again. Um, but let's dive into this pluck bass and have a look at what's going on here. Um, in fact, I actually first want to have a look at the the MIDI pattern and discuss a couple of interesting things here, um, which I think is you know very unique to Merkaba's sound. Let's just solo the kick and the bass over here quickly. So one thing that I think is like the kind of or one of the prevalent things I think in Makaba's uh, style is these kind of like uh, more syncopated bass rhythms. So, you know, in Cytrons, we're used to just, you know, every every off 16th beat is a bass line. You know, it's that kind of like gallopy lead or, or that kind of like gallopy progression, kick and then three bass notes, kick and then three bass notes. And... The thing about that is when you start to try introduce these kind of like polyrhythmic elements or stuff that's kind of like off the grid or with swing and with extra um, different grooves, then often it doesn't work because that transient of the bass on every 16th is creating this kind of like regimented grid. And, you know, you can very easily hear when something's kind of off that grid. So unless you're you know, creating the same groove on the bass notes as well as everything else in the track, then it tends to get very muddy. However, something about Zenon and Makaba style in particular is there's a lot less bass notes and he utilizes a lot of these kind of like warp bass notes to achieve, you know, space where he can create these polyrhythmic percussion patterns and, you know, stuff that's slightly off the grid to create more groove and I think that's kind of very very interesting I mean if you look here there's only five bass notes um, <clears throat> on the main kind of like MIDI element but you know regularly we would have three six nine twelve twenty four bass notes and yet we're still achieving a very fat sound and again what it allows you to do is you know fill up these spaces with the low synth sounds and low FM stabby sounds, which is another very prevalent thing um, with Xenon and with Makaba's sound. But I'm going to dive more into that stuff in future episodes. So this bass is really, really simple. It's kind of like a traditional uh, Cytrons bass, you know, with starting with a kind of like a saw wave. However, um, there's a couple of interesting things here. So I added a kick attack. Um, for a little bit of a kind of like plucky element. So actually what I want to do is let's just turn off the processing here. But to get this kind of like shape here with this oscillator, what you need to do is pop open your wavetable editor and click over here. So it imports this saw wave into your kind of like FFT readout. Essentially what this is, is these are your kind of like uh, fundamental and harmonics. So each one represents a different octave in the sound, uh, for lack of a better explanation. So you can kind of use these little bars to carve out more of a kind of mid rangey tone, if that makes sense. So let's remove some of the fundamental and then we can create more of a kind of mid range tone like this. So that's essentially how I created that kind of waveform. You know, it's a lot more of a kind of punchy mid range bass. Um, okay, it's not exactly the same, but you kind of get the idea. That's very similar. Yeah, that's basically it, you know, some little bit of envelope on the 
uh, filter over here and then some compression in the processing and the rest was done with the mix and a couple of other um, you know EQs uh, a bit of multi-pass and a couple of other stuff in the mix um, that I'm going to dive into shortly but let's look at how I created this kind of warp base so what I did is I just duplicated this channel that I've created over here um, and then change the MIDI so you can see this MIDI is just like a single note like this I'm just going to copy this one over here and then I jumped in here and edited this these uh, envelopes and stuff to create more attack so that it kind of like you know it has this pluck and then a warp kind of effect check this out I can't explain it but if you hear it you'll know what I'm talking about. I also turned off the noise in this one I think Cool, anyway, you get the idea. So then I fed both of these into a group tunnel, which I used to kind of process it with all the different kind of base processing and stuff that I would usually do. So I'm actually just going to undo this because I've got the example here um, that I think sounded closer to what I was going for. Um, so first up, I used, again, some curve EQ to kind of like shape the tone closer to the example that I was going for. Um, you know, I really wanted to accentuate this kind of like mids and high frequencies here. Um, let's just check out the example pre and post this EQ. And then I processed it with some uh, multi-pass. So here what I did is I just split it into two bands. And then the second band, I wanted to kind of like create kind of a smeared effect with a bit of reverb. So I used Disperser, Reverb, and then a little bit of further transient shaping for that. And then I mixed it all down ever so slightly. Um, you can pause the screen and copy these settings if you want. I'm not going to dive too de in depth with exactly what happened there. But I'm just going to show you an example of pre and post this. Then I used Acoustica Audio's Pink 4, did a bit of uh, low-end boost over here um, and here, I think at 180 and 400, and then a low cut, just because I find this one is really, really clean, doesn't really alter, this kind of low cut in this plugin doesn't alter the audio too much. So I did that for some low cut, and then I used this Titanium 3, also Acoustica Audio. It's basically a Paltic emulation, and I just used this to kind of create a kind of simulated extended low end sound. So I want to show you guys what this sounds like pre and post. So I want to have a look at um, a couple of these kind of like rhythmic embellishments, which I think kind of like add to the sound of the bass. So in case you didn't pick it up, um, there's these kind of like bongo, congo type samplers that are playing at the same kind of rhythm as the bass. So it kind of like adds this transient upper layer to the bass. But also what it does is it kind of creates almost a humanized sound so that each bass tone is slightly different if that makes sense so let's just um i want to solo the bass notes and these uh tablas bongos layers
So here, I want to show you guys a couple of things which I think are pretty interesting, um, which I think, you know, would, wouldn't really be possible if it weren't for the kind of like the style of this bass. So if you look at this kind of like percussive roll here, this is, you know, completely off the grid. Each, this is three notes and none of them are sitting on the kind of regular one over 16th grid. You know, if we had two Cytron's bass notes there in between, it would sound really off you know but because there's that lack of kind of bass transient in that part it allows us to create these polyrhythmic elements here again i've got another this is a loop sample i'm just going to solo this of it's a similar thing you know you've got uh, one two three four five hits in a kind of like two beat section over here Cool. So we are getting there. Let's have a look at some of these sound effects and stuff. So here, um, this is a kind of like standard thing in a lot of Xenon and Macabre stuff is just a kind of like ambient bed of nature sounds, bird sounds, that kind of thing. And I actually recorded this on my recent holiday. I think you can actually hear my footsteps in the background there. So then that I just EQ'd a little bit, added LFO tool to create a kind of like pumping groovy motion and then added some reverb to that. I used Arturia Rev Intensity, it's my kind of favorite at the moment. Um, then the rest of the stuff is pretty much like Foley sounds and random kind of like percussive hits and stuff um, from this kind of like African percussion sample pack that I found somewhere many years ago. So I think these are kind of like Hollywood Edge style random Foley type samples that you'll find a lot of in this type of genre, um, you know, with a lot of EQ and reverb. I think I just duplicated the channel several times and just changed how these kind of like uh, EQs and stuff were on these different channels. So let's actually just, um, <clears throat> I think this is a gunshot or a gun reloading sound. Hits, explodes, that kind of stuff. And yeah, African samples. What's this stuff here? So again, like this, this kind of goes back to that like polyrhythmic thing I was saying. You can kind of like sneak in these like shk shk and all these like things with different rhythms in between to create a much more complex groovy rhythm overall, um, which I think is the kind of like the kind of key element with this type of style. Absolutely. So yeah, I think that should pretty much discuss most of the stuff that I've prepared for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I'm going to be going into kind of these FM stabs as well as a couple of other things um, that I pick up from the references and stuff in future episodes. Um, if there's anything in particular that you want me to look at, then also just let me know in the comments. I'm going to be posting a bunch of these like presets that I've made and samples and stuff or like the kick and stuff to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link that's going to be in the description. Yeah, if you like this, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. See you guys next time. Cheers.